What number? Amen. Hear me. Hear what me. number? We hear, amen, do all things unto God in divine order. Amen. We bring every error in our lives to the proper alignment to God's will and God's will. Amen. 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 So, you know, uh, <clears throat> children say things that are uh, point and so, so, and so very true. And uh, stuff just goes to my cover, because I talk to people on the side. And uh, I want to say, uh, you don't have any costume. And I say, oh, okay, you don't have any costume. And I thought of this. It's amazing what children say to you. And I thought about it. You know what? It's what you wear when you're not walking. Uh, a quad kick goes to a phone and puts on a This is a uniform. All of us have on a uniform. And a uniform is when you are what you wear. You don't have to a uniform is when you are what you wear. Amen. Uh, and the Bible says that Elijah left his mantle with Elijah. A mantle was something that you wore. Know. And I'm saying that to say that. I got out of your children because of what their grandparents.
with that. We conquered a lot of obstacles. Amen. We conquered a lot of obstacles. Amen. This is the first time. Amen. Amen. And this is our culture. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us stand and turn to page 477 in our hymn.
of you all like uh, Negro spirituals. Amen. 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 Did you know that uh, you can play any Negro spiritual on the black keys of the piano? Mm. Since you didn't know it. Oh, man, yes. <laughs> the black keys on the piano is, is a set of five, and it repeats again. You with me? Now, you can play any Negro spiritual on the black keys on the piano. Don't need nothing else. Y'all don't believe me? I see it. Watch.
Bible says that in Psalm 105, 37, is that God delivered the children from Egypt to Israel. They were from infants to old, maybe 100 years old, or old. But what it says is that when they ate the manna that God gave them, when they ate what God, see, God told them what to eat. These people, that's important. I don't want to ever forget you. He told them what to eat. And everything that God does, He does for a reason. And, yes, Lord. and the Bible says that every one of them traveled all the way from Egypt to Israel, and there was not one people. That's right. Nobody was sick. From infancy to triple digits in age. They ate what God said to eat. Amen. They traveled all those miles all that time. And nobody recalled here. Love it. Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8, you receive power. Holy Spirit has come upon you. Believe it or not, it's the same that happened then, happens now, because the power of God goes into the soul of man. Man is the spirit of God. What he did for them was if you keep what I tell you, your body will be strong if you let my tell you.
Amen. Fruit Land, the team of Dr. Deacon Robert Dobine, Terry Clemens, Amen. Mary Ellen Johnson, Peaches, Frank Miley for Brother Vernon Johnson, my friend, Amen. Amen. Frank Miley for Maggie Mitchell's birthday. Amen. Her birthday tonight. So you know she should be harassed for being called by the pastor. Sister Addie Nelson, Sister Nola Rucker, Sister Amen. My father and cousin, Ellen Townsend, Juan the Person, Sister Townsend Westbrook, Sister Nell Wayne.
God's only care of one another. It's the hatred of God's not hard for us to remove it. That's the leader of this country, the leader of every country. The leader of leading people is called the Ogre of Not Far Away from Home. Who are these things? What you got? You please walk with them and talk with them. Leave them in hand. God will be in the right now. But we need this place today to know that no one can see you now. The way we talk, the way we talk. Lord, we can't praise you enough because you're good, so good, so good. Thank you for who you are. Keep us in the name of Jesus, we pray.
John chapter 17. Let's say it together. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Our servant hear it. John chapter 17, verse 17. Amen. And we're here together. The word of God says what? Okay, let's do it as if we had rehearsed it. There's only one passage of scripture here. Amen. Let's read it together. Amen. With volume. If we mean it, amen. amen. Let's start together. Different. 
make them gleam, glow, make them eradicate because they're different, because of thy word. All right. Come to here, we're all, we're all the way in now to this year. Yeah. It's a new year, <clears throat> but it could easily be our last year. We all saw the new year come in. We may not see the, year, the new year go out. So let's make this new year our best year. All right. Let's live this year like it's our last year. All right. You know, when Prince said, I was going to party like it's 1999. Yeah, yeah. He was, what he was saying was hyperbolically. See, 1999 was a far year, it was far away. So he wasn't saying let's do it for the year 1999. But he was doing it was a measurement of it. All right. Meaning ongoing, continuous. That's what I want us to do. You know, there's a statue in Greece of a man whose hair is blowing all in front of him. It's a large statue. And all his hair is blowing in front of him. And he falls for that. And that symbolizes what they're saying is uh, once uh, he passes by, grab his hair while he's in front of him. But once he passes by, he won't be through again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And that's what this year is. That's what today is. Beloved, once you pass by, you can't be grabbed. Beloved, <clears throat> so let's refuel and stay full every day. Amen. So I'm asking us today, let's get an atomic habit today. An atomic habit is a habit that is, it doesn't have to be long, but it's strong and it will dominate your life. Some of us have atomic habits right now that we can work. Because atoms, an atomic thing, is something that's dominated, explosive, uh, that's, that's, that's uh, rearranging and changing power. So let's make that an atomic habit uh, of reading our life. Come to here. Reading my life has saved me more heart, given me more wisdom, protected me from more mistakes, infused me with more comfort, and provided me with more encouragement than anything I've ever done in my life. Uh, now what I'm going to say only applies uh, if, you, if you believe the Word of God is the Word of God. Uh, a little boy was sitting on, 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 in front of a curb and, amen, the boy was standing back forth with two little buckets and a man came in, amen, to his town and said, do you know where, amen, where Mr. Robinson lives? He said, oh yes, you know, how do I get there? I said, well, uh, you can start, you know where the, where the, the, the general store is? He said, uh, no, I don't know where the general store is. He said, oh, well, uh, can you get to it if you go from the Grand Avenue Grammar School? Do you know where the Grand Avenue Grammar School is? He said, no, I don't know where that is. He said, um, well, you can do it from, you can, you can find it even closer if you go, because he did it up the street from the post office. You know where the post office is? He said, I don't know the post office is. He said, sir, the fact you don't know where anything is, I can't help you. Because I can't give you a starting point. All right. If you don't allow God to give you a starting point, his word, you can't help If you don't read the Bible, then one of these four things is true about you. You might want to write, you might want to write these down. Right. If you don't read the Bible, then one of these four things is true about you. Number one, you believe your body is more important than your soul. You believe your body 
is more important than your soul. Second, you believe the material is more important than the spiritual. You believe the material is more important than the spiritual. Third, you believe you can make it on your own and do life all by yourself. You don't need God's help. You believe you can make it on your own and do life by yourself, and you don't need God's help. Fourth, you believe that what God has to say is just that, it's just not that important. It's one of those, you can't, it's one of those four things. You can look at me or you can't deny it. It's one of those four things. It's why you're not reading God's name. All right. There are three steps, amen, you can take that will radically change your life. Now, if this Bible, hear me somebody, if this book is the Word of God, then you know that there's, there's no other book like it. Right, right. If this book is the Word of God, then you know there's no other book like it. You cannot read this book every day and it not change your life. Impossible. Impossible. You cannot read this book every day and it not change your life. The first thing you need to do, look to the Bible daily. Look to the Bible daily. You got Psalm 119. Look at verse 18. Psalm 119, look at verse 18. Psalm 119 is, a, is, is by a man in the Word of God that's bragging about the Word of God. That's what Psalm 119 is all about. It's a man that reads and lives the Word of God, bragging about the Word of God. So we're in Psalm 119, it's 176 verses. So let's start reading. We can start. Let's start reading now. No. <laughs> but look at verse 18. It says, "Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law." See that? It's useless if you don't read. It's like a treasure in a chest. You've got to open it. Yes, when you open the word of God, God opens his mouth. Amen. There are more Bibles in homes and hands now than ever before. But people who say they believe, amen, and love the God of the Bible are suffering right now from spiritual unrest. You got four cup, coffee cup rings on your Bible, like, like Olympic rings. That's what you use when you're sitting your cup on. The author here says that there are treasure trolls of truth. He says wonderful things, not historical or boring or just theological things. He says they are wonderful things. It's a box full of wonderful jewels, gold, silver, diamonds. All you have to do is open it. If you open it, God will open your eyes. Yeah. I'm promising the authority of the word of God. If you open it, God will open your eyes. I don't care how rich, smart, attractive you think you are. There's not a day that you don't need to hear from God. Yeah. Not a day. Beloved hear me. The best place in life to be is in God's presence. But the best, the best place in life to be is in God's presence, and the best way to get into God's presence is to get into God's Word. Yes. To get into God's presence, you can get into God's Word. Yes. Now hear me. It's so vital. Amen. The people came to Samuel one time. Now hear me. They said, we want a king. Right, right. Now, now, don't go no, no, this way. They said, we want a king. And when they say they want a king, God said, okay, I'll, I'll give you a king. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And, <clears throat> and he said, okay, now you get your king. When you get your king, uh, I have a one cry. I'm not requiring you for your, for your king that, you know, I'm not, I'm not concerned about his age. I'm not concerned about his education. I'm not concerned about his political skill or his appearance, his pedigree or his experience. This is what God says. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 17. All right. It says this 18 and 19. Just write it down. I'll read it. It says, And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his king, when the king comes, that, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of, what, out of that which is before the priest of Levi. He's not, he's not wanting to read the word of God, but rather right what he reads. Because, hear me, you have a chance to remember something more when you write it down. Now look at verse 18. And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, when he's king, that he shall write him a copy of his law in a book out of the which is before the priest of the Levites, and it shall be with him. And he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord. That's why. You can't learn about me without reading my word. He said, now get this. To fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of, his, of this law, and these statutes to do them. Oh, help me so much. Yeah. What he's saying is, if God required, amen, him to read every day, wherever he goes, if God required that of a king, what do you think he requires of you all? Think of what this culture behavior would be like if I leave us follow the word of God every day. Right, right. What do you think it would be like? Oh, here. Reading the word opens principles, precepts, practices, it enhances, it enriches, it enables you to be more and to do more and to hear it and instill more joy than you could ever imagine. You know what's uh, sad sometimes for me and uh, people say to me, it, 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 but I, you know, I, I accept it. I try to be, take it as a compliment, but when people say to me, uh, you know, Pastor, uh, if I heard, if I, if I heard you, uh, your sermon, or uh, came to your lesson, or came to your class, if I knew that uh, before I married you, if I knew that before I married you, if I knew that before I got this job, if I knew that before I quit this job. If I knew that before, I, hear me. It's always been here. Right. I'm not the author. Come on, Pastor. Right. So many people look back on their lives from regret, from the decisions they made. If I knew that this, when I read, read this in the Bible, I'd have looked that food back in his mom's house. <laughs> If I knew, man, well, I wouldn't have took that job. Oh, help me somebody. If I knew what this meant, then I wouldn't have gone there. Right. But it's always been here. Come on, so first thing we want to do, amen, is we want to look to the Bible daily. Yeah. Secondly, we want to learn from the, from the God's word continuously. Hear me. I'm a learner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Now hear me. Uh, sometimes some folks may think I ask too many questions, but you know, I'm, I'm going to learn that I'm going to ask a question. You know, some folks may really think, that, well, that's fine. But I'm going to keep asking too. And, and hear me. But one thing that in asking, I've learned to. The moment I ask that question, I'm smarter than the, the only stupid question is the only next question. Amen. I'm inquisitive. And the moment you quit learning, you quit living. Right. Old people, amen, get old when they think they've learned it all. Come on, Pastor, say it, say it. See, that's the difference between growing old and being old. Come on. Growing old means you're doing what? Growing. Right, boy, you think you know it all. You all you gotta say is, Yo, my friend! <laughs> 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 
Ne oluyor? 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 Ne The greatest lessons in life are all found in God's word. Uh, look at verse 7 of Psalm 119. It says, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I, when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. You see that? Well, I've learned. Uh, but look, it's not just all true. It's all true. I'll say it one more time. It's not just all true. It's all true. Yeah. 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 It teaches you on marriage. Teach how to be a better husband, a better wife, a better parent. They may teach how to manage your money, find the right kind, be the right kind of friend, handle your enemies, handle your conflict. Because, beloved, it works. Yeah. It works. It worked 2,000 years ago. Yeah. It works today. And it will work 2,000 years from now. Beloved, it's true, but it's always true. It not only teaches you how to live. Look at verse 33. Verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. They teach you how to die. Amen. Amen. If you're not ready to die, you're not ready to live. Right, right. Oh, you ain't here. Right. If you're not ready to die, you're not ready to live. Beloved, put the verse 33. It says, Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it until the very uh, the older we get, the closer to death we, you come. Amen. Now hear me. Hear me. Uh, and I'm not going to die close. I'm going to die climbing. Right. Oh, you better hear me. I learned more from my dad in his dying. Almost more than I did in his death. You ain't hearing me. Beloved, yeah. now if you won't come to my funeral, <laughs> promise me, I ain't going to come to yours. <laughs> but now, too many of us are interested in mom's will. Dad's will, yeah. grandma's will, yeah. amen. No, be interested in his will. Yeah. Be interested in God's will. Yeah. Hear me. Uh, we had a wonderful meeting a week ago Saturday. Now, let me tell you what all our smooth about. We took letters and we addressed all the letters. And what touched me, we didn't have one letter complaining about the lack of hearing or being taught of God. Amen. 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 It meant everything to me. Amen. Now, in having said that, hear me. Your spiritual feeding is really your responsibility. All right. Amen. You feed you. The Bible says, study to show thyself a prayer. Yeah. We come together to dissect the word. Right. Something you've already eaten. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Uh, hey. uh, uh, how do y'all remember? Some of you remember when you know, remember Howard Hughes. Yeah. 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 Now, Howard Hughes died in 1981. Uh -huh. And uh, he was. One of the richest men ever lived, richest men ever lived. He was carried for around the clock by 15 personal attendants, three doctors, the best health care money could buy. And when he died, he wasn't sick, he wasn't from illness, he wasn't cancer, he wasn't diabetes or heart disease or kidney failure. The richest man in the world died of malnutrition. Malnutrition. He wouldn't eat. Because he had a phobia of gender. A phobia is an illogical level of fear. The Bible says in Proverbs 21, a fool runs nobody's pursuit. A 
a phobia. Yes. God even deals with that. Yes. Why do you think there are so many fear knots in the Bible? Yes. Because a lot of us don't move with what we need to do because we fear. Yes. Now, what do you think the opposite of fear is? The opposite of fear is love. It's not faith, or it's love. The Bible says, love casts out. All right, yeah. Remember when, 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 when your children were, were, were small and they were scared of the dark or something, and you went in the room, uh, you didn't go in and say, oh, come on, little Johnny, be, be, be courageous, have faith. <laughs> you come in and hold them with love, and that gives them the love. You better hear me. They're coming. Legacy, this is the day. When he, he was smiling, I, I, I'm, I'm talking to you. He would smile while I was holding him. The moment that cold water hit him, <laughs> <laughs> he quit smiling, but then he looked at me. Yeah. Right. He looked at me. He's a great athlete now. I don't know I'm seeing my side. I, I, I love you now. Um, you know, CC <clears throat> uh, was uh, more uh, when he was baptized. Uh, he came to me and, and he stood at the, at the pool at the, at the steps and said, uh, I know, I'm no longer afraid of the water. The opposite of fear is love. And he looked at someone he loved. How are humans would he eat? And the last symptom of a malnutrition patient is they lose the desire for food. They go from not eating They go from not eating to can't eat. And they die. Mm -hmm. Spiritual <coughs> nutrition. A day will come when those who will not. God says, now you can. Man cannot live by bread alone, yeah. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Help me somehow. Yeah. So you need to, amen, look to the Bible today. Yeah. Oh, help me somebody. Yeah. Learn from the Bible today. Yeah. And then, beloved, live out the Bible practically. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Look at verse, verse 9. Where with all shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed. There's a calling to that word. You need to live. James says in 1 Timothy 2, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Amen. See, that's what we're, see, you're hearing it now. Amen. You remember it, amen, till you get to the sound. We claim the promises, enjoy the blessings, and the peace of the Bible, but we don't obey the Bible. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> but I can hear it. But I can't seem to get my life together. I can't seem to get my stuff together. I can't seem to get all of with my job and my career or my budget. And I ask him, are you a giver? Mm -hmm. right. Right, right. Are you a giver? Mm -hmm. I love it. When you give, yeah. But you don't give to give. Right. God never asked how much did you give. God asked why did you give. Yeah. What a difference. Hear me. I love you. Gatherers sometimes eat better, but give.
givers always sleep better. Beloved, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It was the power of God. Beloved, and beloved, I'm personal. I, I believe that. I know it's true. Because I've seen it practically when I'm watching y'all. When I'm watching y'all. It is absolutely wonderful to see the growth that you all have made. Yeah. To see the difference you, you all have made. You all have, beloved, uh, you all make me almost brag. The reason I won't brag is because God will strengthen my hand and my hand still sore from last time. But it's the power of God. He said, I'm not ashamed of God's advice, it, it, but it is the power of God, not the preacher. Let me ask you, what or who is going to have the final word in your life this year? Who is going to make every decision, amen, in your life this year? Who's going to decide when you're challenged, when you're confused, or conflicted, or corny, or crippled? Or in Christ, yeah. who's going to call the shot in your life? Yeah. Hollywood, yeah. Wall Street, yeah. the courts. I don't care what the, the Supreme Court, Congress, President. My mind and heart are made up. It's fixed. Yeah. Right is right, and what God says is wrong is wrong, and that's it. That's it. I don't care how popular or unpopular it is. If God says it's right, it's right. When God says it's wrong, it's wrong. And it doesn't change. You look to the Bible to be saved. You learn from the Bible to be wise. You live out the Bible to be holy. You learn to love the Bible, then learn to love it. Hear me. The Bible is universal in its appeal. It's reasonable in its teaching. It's reliable in its promise. It's doable in its cup. Yeah. It's far reaching in its vision. It's accurate in its prophecy. It's simple in its application. It's yeah. doing all in its man in its faithfulness. Yeah. Yeah. Read it to be wise. Believe it to be saved. Practice it to be holy. Yeah. Beloved, the word of God is like a balloon. If you got a balloon, I don't know what balloon is going on now with this. You, if you get a balloon and you blow in that balloon, you blow it all the way up and tie it and let it go. And it flows all the way to China. If it pops, once it pops, the fact that you blew in that balloon, it has your DNA. Amen. Amen. It has your DNA. Uh, about, I, I thought about, I remember uh, some time ago, before the pandemic, I was teaching in, in the Marine Industry and Leadership School. And so, uh, so while I was teaching, <clears throat> one of the uh, 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 friends of mine that, that, that was teaching, he was calling me, kind of calling me on the set. So I, you know, when I come into church, my phone is off. I'm not going to be talking. And so uh, he said, Brian, I'm calling you call over now. I said, uh, what, what, what are you talking about? Steve, you know, this, this is, he said, Steve, I love you, man, but you know, you don't never answer the phone. I said, I sent you a text. And my text told you that I was in class. Uh -huh. But you didn't read the text. Uh -huh. I was calling on God. Mm -hmm. We don't think God is answering my call. Right. Sure. And we get mad. Right. Oh. And God says, I sent you.
struggle this week about what to preach today. I want to just the word of God. It's something I need to address. Uh, if I don't address it, I need to turn in my role. Okay. All right. uh, and uh, <clears throat> I need to address the difference between the I love you all too much not to. It really appears to me, I love I did all of you, but you saw me. And I thought to myself a moment, enough is enough. Mm-hmm. But then I, you know, so what, God, what do I say to God's people about? Oh. <clears throat> so God gave me a word, and I'm going to be brief, but I'm going to read the script, and then I'll, I'll go through it. You don't have to, you can write the script down, you know, Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30. There's another parable of putting people up to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and in his way. When the blade sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, is not not sow good seed in thy field? From whence then had a ten? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. That's why you gather the tares, and you don't also the wheat with them. Let them both go together into the heart. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Uh, come to heal, uh, there's something wrong with your feet. There's something wrong with your feet. There's something wrong with your feet when you're turning to the one that's supposed to be helping you. It's hurting you. Something is wrong in the field. We want innocent black men treated like guilty white men. There's something wrong in the field when we want innocent black men treated like guilty white men. So I'm just saying something. Dylan Roof killed nine black men in the Mother Emmanuel Methodist Church. He was arrested without incident, and when asked if he was hungry, they went to Burger King and brought him something. Yeah. You don't believe it? Look it up. Yeah. Now hear me. <clears throat> Kyle Rittenhouse, too young to even own a gun, went to a demonstration with a semi-automatic weapon, shot and killed two protesters. But was acquitted of the charges. We want our guilty, oh, help me somebody, black men, we want our innocent black men treated like the guilty white men. Y'all ain't me. Now hear me. Hear me. Uh, These five black policemen. That murdered Tyree Nichols. They, they did it because they thought they could. Yeah. Yeah. Because they thought they could. <clears throat> Something is wrong yes, it is. in the street. Yes, 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 yes. uh, you know, policing started since we're doing black history. Policing started to catch slaves. Yeah. Running for free. Uh-huh. That's how we used to start. All right. It was a minute to get up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You don't know the history. Yeah. You're going to pull on your feet. Yeah. It was called a slave control. All right. George Floyd, Dr. Wright, 
Andre Hill, Manuel Ellis, Breonna Taylor, Adesiana Jefferson, Ira Russell, Stephon Clark, Malcolm John, Philando Castillo, Alton Sterling, Freddie Gray, Tanisha Bonville, Eric Gardner, Tamio Rice, Michael Brown, Tamisha Anderson, Sandra Bland, Trevon Martin, all died at the hands of police and authorities because they thought they could. Something's wrong in the field. I was at the, I was at the, at, at the, uh, at the leaders, uh, pastor and preacher junior meeting on Tuesday. And a young preacher, he, 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 he was a pastor and, uh, but he was a young guy. And he asked me, he said, how do you think these people are? Some of these guys call their own. I said, no. Uh, well, it's no coincidence that these men call on their own. Take you somewhere here like I said. Oh, yeah. 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 Tyree was 100 yards from his home. Yes, yes. He called his mama because he thought she could hear him. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll take you yeah. somewhere here. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Because he knew if she could hear it and heard him, the police would have had to hey, kill her too. Oh, you agree? He thought you call your mama because you think out there where you are, you think your mama can hear you. The black woman's womb has always been comfort for us. Her embrace. Her love has always been there, even when we've been abused. Yeah. Every man, back in the same days, to care of other folks' children, but never to let them her own. Stolen of old, we tried. Bitter the taste of rock. Yeah. Oh, help me, somebody. Yeah. Built in the days when hope unborn had died. Yeah. Beloved, my mother and my, and my brother, who sleep the long sleep now. Yeah. Uh, in 1957, my mother, my brother, and I were on a bus. My brother was standing by my mother's side. I was sitting in my mother's belly. She was short. And they were on a bus. And at that time, I don't know if some of y'all remember, but if you got up here, up first, you stand and you pull this thing and you get out in the middle of the bus. So my mother was stepping off of the bus. She had to step off the bus. And as she was stepping off, the guy tried to snatch her purse. She tried to snatch her purse and she struggled with him. As she struggled with him, and the, the, the strap broke and the guy ran off. My mother had a purse. So when she held her purse, she put it down. The door closed. And she looked and she saw the bus leave. And my brother was spying and he saw her go, ah. Bust the car. My mother was short. She ran from that point and beat the bus to the next stop. Because she heard it. So she used to call every every day at five 
my car to tell my dad stuff we did. <laughs> so we was up in the park playing, and my brother broke his leg. He broke his leg and he was hollering, he was crying. He was hollering and crying. And uh, you know, we was looking and you know, he was 14, I was about seven, you know, looking at him. And so uh, somebody went and told my dad, my dad came down and picked my brother up and carried him from the background park. Those of you know, I live up here, brought him home. When he walked in, we walked in the house, the phone rang. Uh-huh. Come on now, come on now. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. It was my mother. Uh -huh. She said, I'm calling the sun man, right? I'm calling the sun man, right? And my father said, you know, push the broke leg. <laughs> we didn't, the thing was, she was at the rain and this And her son said, Mama. From Fair and Lee. Come on, come on. We're in there. No, she didn't out of it here. But there's a connection that God offers to a mother and her child. Amen. Amen. These women, these black women, these mothers, yes. they voted for they put Obama in office. They put Kamala Harris in office. They put Biden in office. But the John Lewis Act is not in effect yet. George Floyd Policing Act is not in effect yet. There's something wrong in the field. These women have put all these men in office. All the black women put these men in office. Black men put all these things in place. So he says, it's another parable that Jesus says, now you go back to scripture for y'all. 
The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man who sowed seed, good seed in the field. Well, Bob, man slept. Slept me not doing anything. Right, he ain't coming to church. Okay. <laughs> he ain't reading the word. <laughs> now take care of things, folks. Now look at your family, teach your family. Yeah. Now teach your children how to love one another. Principal, you know, now teach them how to be home at 5 o'clock, eat dinner at 10. Amen. Let the children call you by the first man. Amen. It's so important to you that you, that you, so to you, that you be your children's brother rather than their best friend. So while they slept, well, I'm taking it here. The enemy, watching all the time, so tears on the wheat and went his way. Okay. But when the blade was strung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Yes, sir. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, does thou not sow good seed in my field? Who well, is had the tares? He said unto them, The enemy has done this. The ruler, Jesus, the enemy has done the servant said, and look out then that we go out and gather them up. He said, no. Well, he gathered the stairs, he put up also the wheat with it. Let them all come together. Yeah. Until the harvest. And the time of harvest, I'll say to the reapers, gather together first the stairs, and bind them in bundles, to burn them. Amen. We gather the wheat until my own. What's the difference between wheat and tares? See that Jesus said, I said, do, do we, you know, let's play with Jesus. No, leave him alone. We can tear it with this alive. Mm -hmm. Now hear me. Life is life. We should have been just as offended with this life taking as we were when George Floyd. Because the word of God doesn't change. The wheat and tares are just alike, but a tear is a faster than wheat. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Say it, say it. Wheat has grain inside. Uh -huh. Tear is empty. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. When you're empty on the inside, you can kill me and go get a hammer. When you get the inside, you can abandon your children, they won't matter to you. You better the tear among the wheat. And there's some tear in here. The wheat, 
I'm going to come. Beloved, don't be discouraged. The voice, oh, I'm going to go there. We were at the hospital when Jimmy was killed. And I went in the room with his son. He was lying there, they thought, in a coma. His mother said, Jimmy, The voice! He heard the last voice he heard the one he heard his mother. Mothers hear me. There is an element of connection that you have with your children that God has elevated over that. Jesus said to John, from the cross, he called out to his mother. What he said, mama? George Floyd said, mama? Tariq Nipple said, mama? My brother Butch said, mama? Hear me, mother. God will elevate you even when you're around the test. Your heart may be broken sometimes. You may feel despised or disrespected. Hear me. Jesus says, no, no, no. I was with my master. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. When God called help me somebody. Come on now, come on. Her son home. She said, I know. Come on, come on, come on. She said, Pastor, find me. Because somewhere he said,
love to be a pastor. Amen. Not nearly as much as I love to see you give your life to Christ. Is there one today?
product has something that could have been on the bottom. Please take a look at the table and show the fact that it's okay. Please allow 